have to have a bit of a cast iron stomach at the moment with a number of assets in China. It's not just property. We're seeing tech hit to so many concerns, the regulatory clampdown, but at the same time, this expected stimulus from the PBOC. How do you view China, David? Well, I think that there's been so much pessimism on China's economy and market, especially over the past uh, two to three quarters. And I think that the macro backdrop it appears to be improving somewhat in the recent uh, comments that came out from the Central Economic Workers Conference. And we're going to see a pivot in terms of policymakers becoming a lot more accommodative on the monetary policy side and also instituting more fiscal stimulus. So I think that there are green shoots that are already sprouting. And when you look at a big sell off, the likes of some of these property stocks down by 10% or so, is that an attractive level to get in or you still stay cautious for now until we know more? We've been on the sidelines on high yield credit in China for the past year. And I think that the space still continues to try to find a floor. I don't think that we've hit it yet. I think that it's likely that we'll continue to see more property uh, high yield defaults. Uh, in the China high yield space. And because of that, um, some of the headwinds continue. But at the same time, I think that the government has been coming out to try to stabilize the market. And we saw mortgages grow on a sequential basis. And so we may not be at the bottom of the cycle, the credit cycle for the property market yet, but I think that we're getting there uh, pretty soon. When you say stabilised, we certainly heard that from authorities over the weekend, that uh, ensuring stability, really the key call there. What kind of further measures are you expecting then from authorities in 2022? I think that comments recently by policymakers indicate that we could see forthcoming an additional uh, policy rate cut on uh, the risk reserve requirement, further short-term liquidity injections, and also... Uh, perhaps bringing forward some of the fiscal stimulus uh, from the second half of next year into the first half of this year on kind of the, uh, the local government financing vehicle stimulus side. So I think that what's interesting to note is that while the rest of the world is normalizing and tightening monetary policy, uh, China is actually headed in the opposite direction and loosening and uh, both monetary and fiscal policy. David, uh, Rishi, just, you know, as we say and we've been talking to a lot of people that perhaps the, that we're done with the regulatory clampdown then we get this fine okay albeit only three million yuan for Weibo um, it does send a message that it's not over with though certainly that's right I wouldn't say a, a three million dollar a three million RMB fine on Weibo is perhaps another regulatory measure uh, out there to perhaps spook the market but I think it does uh, does demonstrate that that regulators are taking perhaps more nuance, uh, tinkering with policies. I think most of the major policies targeting uh, specific sectors within the technology industry have already been, uh, you know, been implemented. And now, you know, we're not out of the regulatory woods yet, but I'd say that the, the bulk of that has already occurred. We've got Fed policy going in one direction, as you mentioned earlier, and uh, China going in the next. How does this bifurcation actually affect strategy? Well, I don't think that investors are really appreciating this bifurcation. And I think that uh, this actually makes China a lot more attractive. And certainly we've seen uh, risk assets generally respond favorably to looser, uh, loosening monetary policies. And I think that will occur in China. We take a, a much more constructive view on Chinese equities next year uh, compared to this year. Especially as we see the language from the Federal Reserve continually getting more aggressive, more hawkish, as it were. And that must, I suppose, highlight these risks and bring them, make them more stark, as it were, here, David. That's right. I think that, you know, we're watching the FOMC uh, minutes and, and comments that will come out later this week to see if there's going to be an acceleration in the, in the tapering. I think that there will be, and it's possible that expectations for a rate hike are brought earlier in this year. But we also have to remember that markets have also performed well in the past uh, rate high cycles and the past three times that we've seen that. And I think that U.S. markets will also uh, will be able to shrug this kind of uh, tightening monetary policy off. The communication by the Fed has been a lot better this time around. And I think that markets um, are, are expecting um, you know, both monetary normalization because the economy is continuing to improve.
David, you say that the Fed has been very communicative, but we want to know exactly where markets move after this meeting because there is some indication, perhaps from the bear side, that if there's a bit of a policy mistake, then you could trigger a hard landing. How do you see uh, momentum? Well, I think that we're going to be in this consolidation period as markets digest uh, the possible acceleration of tapering and a possible rate hike earlier than expected. And markets don't like uncertainty. And so we're, we're in this period of uncertainty as we're, we're not quite sure what the schedule is going to look like. And then when that, when that, once that schedule is, is more clear, I think that markets will settle down. But, but we could be prepared for a bit of market volatility. We're nearly two years into this pandemic, and I think many people were thrown by Omicron and, and the challenges it has posed. You rightly point out it might impact tourism in the short term. But what about the impact if we do see in 2022 continual lockdowns and the like? How much does that really affect global growth? I don't see most economies returning back to lockdowns. We saw that case in, in Austria and perhaps maybe a couple more countries in Europe might follow. But I don't think places like the U.S. would go back into economic lockdowns like, like we saw uh, last year. I think that societies and governments have been a lot more adept in dealing with new uh, waves of infection. And this time around, populations are armed with significant levels of vaccinations, which appear to be providing a, a strong line of defense.